And I wish some of y'all would mess with my wife, Jordan. Talking about what you gonna do if you see her. Bishop Demetrius Senegal of the Kingdom Church in Texas called for a full investigation into the November 15th marriage of Des Moines Bishop Dwight Reed and Jordan Reed of the Christ Apostolic Temple. Dwight Reed is 63 years old and Jordan Reed is 19. This marriage tears at the very fiber of the social constructs of the African American family. Children are taught to respect their grandparents' contemporaries, not to marry them. On April 6th, the newlyweds and the church began protecting the marriage in the court of law by filing a lawsuit together in Polk County against Bishop Demetrius Senegal and the Kingdom Church, seeking $1.5 million in damages from libel. If it were to come to that, again, no statement that we have made is without witnesses. Iowa law states the minimum age to marry without parental consent is 18, but Bishop Senegal claims Jordan's paternal grandfather came on one of Senegal's many online platforms alleging clergy abuse. He came onto the clubhouse and emphatically condemned this marriage uh, emphatically his words were and i quote that her father sold his daughter out and pimped her out for his own self-gain the lawsuit claims bishop senegal's allegations have caused severe past and future emotional distress loss of revenue as well as a loss of reputation and good standing in the community because of the power imbalances, it is always the responsibility of the caregiver to maintain appropriate and ethical boundaries. Bishop Senegal claims that Jordan's family was given just days notice of the wedding here at Christ Apostolic Temple. He says that Jordan's father walked her down the aisle that day and willingly gave his blessing, but says that even though it's legal, it may not be ethical. It was legal to prevent women from voting not long ago. Court documents also claim that because of the accusations from Bishop Senegal online to his 11,000 Facebook followers across the country, Bishop Reed and his wife have been regularly harassed online. Unidentified young men have been coming to their home to harass Mr. and Mrs. Reed, and it has created a decline in temple membership and tithing. Now, the Safe House Unmuzzled Advocacy Group, along with alleged witnesses and other alleged victims, met with the Des Moines Police Department today to discuss the potential of filing charges against Bishop Reed and the temple. No charges have been filed at this time. Interviews are ongoing. And I wish some of y'all would mess with my wife, Jordan. <laughs> Talking about what you gonna do if you see her. Well, you will see me on the news. Let, let, let me just tell you that right now. Come on, what you gonna do if you see her? You better walk by and say praise the Lord. That's what you better do. Cause that's my wife. And she grown. She didn't need nobody to sign no paperwork for her. Now, if this was out in the streets, y'all be saying she made a come up. But you a hypocrite. So don't you forget the Bible says marriage is honorable. And the Bible says when you find the wife, huh, you find favor with God, honey. I found some favor with God. And we sleeping good at night. Ain't nobody up all night worrying about all these crooks. But I felt I need to say that because somebody talking about what they're going to do if they see you. I'm telling you now, don't let the devil fool you. Because I ain't the one to play when I get on the other side here. Wish you would.
Yeah, uh huh. You can be the, the, the pastor. Yeah, me. We're just kind of in shock about all of this, um, and kind of embarrassed, um, because this is definitely not a representation of our family. But um, yeah, Dwight has married an eighteen-year-old, and um. It's funny because I was actually on the phone talking to my dad this morning about the situation and he started, he stopped me and he started cracking up laughing. He's like, I noticed you don't say Uncle Dwight anymore. And I was like, damn, like I didn't even peep that. Like, <laughs> and that's been my uncle for 27 years, but it's like, it's Dwight now. Like he, I don't know. So yeah, we're, as a family, we're pretty shocked and embarrassed um, and pretty mad. Um, and at this point, since we've all kind of spoken out about it, he's cut us all off. Um, he still has us on Facebook and things, but like won't talk to us. We can't tell him anything about any of this. So, yeah, that's where we're at right now. So how, how did you find out it? Um, about the marriage? Yeah. Facebook. You just saw a post? Yes. I saw their photos together there were two photos uh she was in a wedding dress sitting on his lap in one and then the other one they were standing up um and i actually don't get on facebook very often uh, i'm more of an instagram you know twitter facebook for little people so yeah. I actually sent me a screenshot of it and i was like what is this so that's how i found out that they were married facebook so there was no like Hey, fake family is some doing anything. It was just, no, you're going to find out like we just find out. Yes. Yes. He did call me um, a few months before that. And he told me he had met a woman. Because um, it's no secret that Dwight was trying to find a wife. Um, and that was his agenda. Everybody knows it. And we were just like, kind of like, you're old at this point. Like, give it up. Like, it's fine if you're single for the rest of your life. Like, that's fine. Um but so he called me he's like i met this woman she's kind of younger um but you know this was god god did this and the circumstances and the way it happened and i was just kind of like oh, okay you know but didn't know her name didn't know how old she was at that point nothing and a few days later or a few months later i get the screenshots from my dad and we're all like what and then we're all like where are her parents and then we find out her mom was totally against it but her dad is like was on board the whole time and even helped facilitate the wedding and things like that so it was it, it, yeah it, it sucks for us it's, <laughs> and like at when i went home to iowa for christmas at that point in time no one in the family had even even after they were married had met her yet we haven't even met the girl mm. so it's very it's all very strange and we're a very loving and family and kind of understanding and we would have like which we're doing now like ripping him a new one for lack of a better term however we would have tried to help protect jordan in the situation and like help her and i think that's why he kind of kept us away from her and still keeps us away from her because like once if we got in there and knew the real tea we would be like hell no hell to the no so yeah. And for everybody watching, Jordan is the white. Yes. So what was your relationship like with with um the, the white? I guess just the white now. Now what relationship with with the white right before this? It was it was okay. So he had been around when I was younger, um, but he was in and out of like jail, a federal prison few times he'd moved to texas to louisiana so we didn't really see him often um once we road tripped down to shreveport from iowa the whole family in the rv to meet him and his ex-wife um now ex-wife things like that but he'd been ghost for a while like a while some years and my dad was always like oh he's in jail or oh he's doing his own thing whatever um so a few years ago he came back to Des Moines, Iowa to live full time. And he kind of started changing a little bit. Like all of a sudden he's a man of God and this and this and that. And, you know, he's always been our cool 
you know, funny, laid back uncle um, kind of thing, you know, drink with us, whatever with us. Uh, so then this, I kind of raised my eyebrow because I'm just a skeptic kind of person. And I don't believe a zebra really changes its stripes. But the rest of my family, oh, he's changed and he's going to have our back and do this and that. And so we started to build up our relationship more. And during that time, so I entered law school in Louisiana in 2017. So then we kind of kept in contact. He would give me like advice about like keeping my head afloat, things like that. But his intention was for me to like go back to Iowa and like basically work for him as an attorney and do things he needed me to do kind of thing. Like he would buy me a law office, this and that. So it was, the relationship was pretty good. Um, I mean, he came to my graduation. I only had four tickets at that time because of COVID. Um, Cause he was one of the people, he's like, I'll support you, you know, in your endeavors, whatever they are. So in a sense, I kind of feel like I was groomed in a way or tried to be pre-groomed for like scamming and like money so I can totally see how he would be grooming Jordan to try to be his wife on some like weird stuff for his personal agenda but I mean we have a pretty good relationship he has a pretty good relationship with the rest of the family um but now it's like totally broken and like he didn't mention this to anybody and so it's just like that right there that's how you know you're wrong yeah, that's real. So, so I mean, you kind of, kind of mentioned it, but the people like in in his circle, like the people at that church or whatever, what's the mindset over there for them to, you know, feel like this is okay, like not really be challenged or just kind of going going off it, you know? Like, do you have an idea? I really don't know, um, and that's kind of why. That's why it's so hard for us as a family because the people who surround Dwight they're very cult minded so it's hard for us to penetrate them to even figure out what's really going on like what the real dirt is and what they even really think um and even if they were scared or like didn't agree with it or things like that are they gonna say anything like we don't know and then also too they're so loyal to dwight it's like they might tell us one thing and then run back and tell him everything we said so we don't really know but from my understanding more and more people are starting to see that this is not right um and are starting to speak up within the church um and i just hope that more do okay well sure i hope they do too because this is uh I guess like no, what's done is done is done is. So like, like moving forward, what is you know what are some things that you guys as a family would like to see happen in this situation? In this situation, um, I can't really speak to the rest of my family, um, but I'm pretty sure that they would also agree with this. Um, so. I personally, though, I want to see, I want to see accountability. That's what I want. And not only for him, you know, predatorizing young women, but also there are a lot of unethical and illegal financial things going on, not only with Dwight, but within the church under his control. Um, People need to be held accountable for that. Um, there are church members the church has a legal counsel um, signing off on you know different documents and things and then now we have this basically a a child marriage so it's kind of like what else is going on there and where is the accountability so that's what we want to see we want to see accountability and we want people to be restored back to their you know just and right position like Jordan needs her childhood back her teenage years back yeah. and we need our family estate back you know things like that okay so oh, you just said family estate it helps for us you know watching what do you mean by family family like what's what's going with that yeah so 
Dwight now owns a hundred percent of all of my great grandparents' properties, which would be his parents' properties. Um, there are three surviving children from my great grandparents. Um, one of the surviving children is my grandfather, so Dwight's brother. Um, Dwight somehow now owns 100% of everything. He lives in my great-grandparents' mansion. That's in his name. He owns the church property. The entire Christ Apostolic Temple property is in his name, 100%. And um, the other property that the church has buildings on, he owns all those. Um, that was a little fishy to me, so I looked into the Polk County land records because when people die... You know, estates have to be distributed equally. And my grandfather lives in the Project Government Housing in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, something wasn't clicking to me. And then I knew Dwight had just popped back up. And I also knew that my papa, before his health started to seriously decline, had banned Dwight from the church, took him out of his will and everything. So, like, how the hell does he have everything? Yeah. The land records indicate that. So my great-grandfather died first. My uncle then becomes power of attorney for my great-grandmother, Willa Mae Reed. Um, shortly before she dies, she signs over all her properties to Christ Apostolic Temple Incorporated for the amount of $1. So it's as if she donated everything she had to the church. Which, if that's what her will was, that is fine. That's her will. That's what her desire was when she died. However, Dwight signed all these documents for her um, as her power of attorney. <laughs> so, okay, fine. A little weird, but fine. She dies, and then a month after she dies, the church does the exact same thing that my grandmother did before she dies. But, so they transfer all that property to Dwight in consideration of $1. So it's like they gave him the property back. So when my grandmother died, it looked like she died with nothing. So there was nothing to distribute to his heirs. Then all of a sudden he gets everything back. Everything's in his name. Wow. Yeah. And lawyers wow. have to be involved. Notaries have to be involved. Witnesses have to be involved. The Polk County land records have all that. They have all the printout. I mean, you can print it out. You can look at it. Um, and the people who are signing these things are church members that have been there for a while. Of Tepestalic? Yes. Sheesh. Yes. Man, this, this, this story just has so, so many red flags. So many red flags. Um, and it's that's like yeah, and so it's like he needed to quickly find, quickly find someone he could manipulate into quickly marrying him, one, and quickly having babies with him, too, because he wants a son so bad because he has broken relationships with his two daughters. Um, and he wants to keep all that money that he stole and all the property that he stole for himself and keep it within his little confine mm -hmm. of his uh, little uh, weird family that he's trying to master manipulate. Hey, right, right. That's why it's why. So you said Mary and kids. So is she having a kid? Yes. Like right now, she's she's right now. Yes. Um, that's actually what my dad and I were talking about this morning because um, my dad, I believe. Someone close to Dwight called my dad and told him that she was pregnant. And then when my dad and I were talking about everything this morning, he's like, um, he's wondering if she was pregnant before they got married. How far along is she? We see, we don't know. But I guess we'll find out when they have the baby. <laughs> I mean, so. we gonna have to. I mean, I mean, you can't really about that. So, so when that baby come out, when that baby come out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is that is wow. So, so my lesson is, is you know, you said you grew up in Iowa. Um, did you ever go to that to that church? And if you did, like, what was your experience up there? Yeah, we would go. Um, when I was very very little, 
Um, I go to Sunday school every Sunday. Um, you know, we would some Wednesdays go to Bible studies. We would go out of town and take the big buses to church conventions and things like that. Um, but as I got older and as my great grandfather, Jeremiah Reed, things started to change a little bit. Um, and it became a little weird, even to someone who kind of grew up in the church as a little kid, you see certain things and you're like, mm, that doesn't add up. So my dad, he kind of, he's like, yeah, if you want to go to church every Sunday with your grandparents, you know, that's your choice. He's like, but I'm not really going anymore and I'm not going to force you to go. So we kind of quit going because it got a little weird at the church. Mm -hmm. um, so they created this school, this church school where kids from the church w were supposed to go. And once they created it, it was like, y'all better come here. And they created it because there were gays in public schools kind of thing. So very strange reasoning. And also too, like it was weird. Like when I would go to the church, there'd be all this, these people like, oh, Brittany, Brittany, and like giving me hugs and kisses. And like, I didn't know who the hell these people were. I'm like, why are they treat me like royalty just because I'm, you know, his great granddaughter. I'm like, I, I barely come to this church anymore, but that's kind of how it is. And I'm like, it's just, it's very strange. Sounds strange. So, so this, this school, like, like, do you mean you said that they they were basically said like, like you go to the school. I'm trying to get you to go to the school. How did that school school work? Um, they didn't. They mentioned the school, but like that for me and like my dad, like that wasn't an option. Um, he's very like independent and headstrong. So, but it was a thing, like it was a known thing. Um, and there were some people who were upset and there were some people who got kicked out of the church if they didn't go to the church school. I don't know how the church school was set up or run or anything i think now they might have a whole building but before it was just like a room um i think they used the sunday school room that we had which is in like the basement of like this little side building on the property um so yeah and then it seems like two people who go to the church school once they graduate they immediately turn around and get jobs somewhere within the church whether that be you know, actually something in the church or like as like the director of the broadcasting at AON Studios kind of thing. And they just, I guess, learn how to do that off Google. I don't know. So it's like once you get in the church as a kid, it's like you're kind of locked in mm -hmm. for life. So did Jordan go to the school? Yes, yeah, she did. She graduated from there. He bought her a car for graduation. He bought her a car. Mm. He bought her a car. What did I get from him for my law school graduation? Nothing. She got a car. She got a car. And a, and a ring. That's him. And other children graduated with her graduating class. They didn't get cars. That's crazy. Yes. That's wild, man. But that, But that's... You know, uh, crazy, crazy, do crazy things at the end of the day. You no, know, I mean it's it, it is. I mean, there's no way to put it. Um, you know, wow, that's that's wild. Um, well, that's 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 crazy. Anything, any kind of last statement, statement, or and you kind of want want people to know about everything that's going on and on, how you feel about it, how over feels about it. I mean, there's any, anything that you want you want to kind of with with with, with, with the pool. Um, I don't, I don't think so. I think I've said everything that needs to be said. Um, I guess I would just tell more people to spread the word. Um, cause I'm sure this is not the only incident of, you know, people basically abusing religion as a mechanism of control. And I think that it puts people in a tough position, um, because they don't maybe want to go against what they know is wrong but what somebody's telling them is right um but yeah i would just encourage people to spread the word and speak up for what you know is right
This is a really sad, sad situation. The pastor of the church, the leader of the congregation, watched this little girl grow up in the church. He watched her grow up in the church and he ends up marrying her when she turned 18. By law, by law, yes, it was completely legal, by law. But morally, morally, it was wrong. It was wrong because one, he's the pastor and the leader of the church. Two, she's an 18 year old girl that was involved and grew up in his church. From she was, I mean, what, 10 all the way up to now she's 18. He's a 63 year old man. You have to make it make sense to me. These pastors are doing and operating in a demonic way. These pastors are doing and operating in a demonic way and you hear the church scores in the background just clapping their hands supporting all the negativity that goes on with these pastors and they wonder why they're able to get away with this stuff they're able to get away with this stuff because people are continuing to support it applaud it y'all tell me is it justifiable for a 63 year old pastor of the congregation to marry a 18 year old girl that's just like your daughter going to the church she's six seven eight and the pastor is watching her grow up as a young teenager all the way from an adolescent to a young teenager now she now she's 18 a legal adult a legal adult but you we all know that's still a baby. We all know that she is still a baby. And here we have it, this 63 year old pastor of the congregation decides to marry your daughter and she's 18 and he's 63. Would you applaud that? Would you, would you congratulate that? Would, would, would that be okay with you? I'm having a hard time understanding how the members of the church allow such acts to go on what was going on before he married her when she was 17 when she was 16 and 15 and 14 and 13 and 12 was he grooming her then what was really going on that's something that you have to ask yourself congregation when we're dealing with these type of pastors Someone needs to step up and say, you know what? Enough is enough. And not just sweep it under the rug. Every single day, these type of things go on. And it's demonic. Coming from a pastor of a congregation, it's demonic. Satan is operating in him. Satan is operating in him. And it's disrespecting God right in front of everyone's face. Disrespecting God right in front of everyone's face. Wake up, people. Wake up.